right today we are going to learn about receptors and effectors first going on to receptors receptors they can be classified both functionally and anatomically first let's learn about functional classification of receptors it is of two types it is based on the info they receive and the manner in which they are stimulated based on the info they receive it is of three types extra receptors that is external exterior surface or cutaneous receptors they are present in skin proprio receptors pp they sense position they sense position and uh, muscle contraction then we, as we have extra receptors we should have intra receptors they are present in viscera now the stimulated receptors they can be mechanical receptors which sense mechanical stimuli or chemo receptors which sense chemical stimuli or thermo receptors which sense change in temperature or photo receptors which change alterations in light or osmo receptors which change changes in osmolarity and nociceptors which sense pain then we have anatomical classification of receptors by anatomy they are classified into two types that is non encapsulated by the presence or absence of a capsule around it that is non encapsulated and capsulated or encapsulated non encapsulated they are free nerve endings then peritracheal trachea is hair so they are also called root hair uh, plexuses then we have tactile discs of merkel free nerve endings they usually sense pain peritracheal they sense light touch they form a plexus around the root of the hair then merkel discs as i told tactile discs of merkel they obviously sense touch tactile touch sensation capsulated capsulated can be meissner then pacinian envelopes of cross or ruffini now as i've told uh, the two types of receptors that is capsulated and encapsulated like either if we rem- uh, either we should remember encapsulated or capsulated so the other will be easy so in uh, a mnemonic for the encapsulated receptors miss passy needs a capsule to cross the roof here miss this is nothing but meissner's passy pacinian here needs a capsule so this will make us remember that this these all are capsulated receptors cross or end bulbs of cross roof ruffini then here meissner this is for two point discrimination then arpesinian is for pressure and vibration cross they are present in neurocutaneous junction then ruffini they are stretch receptors now as we can see in this picture first non encapsulated receptors they are free nerve endings see they have no capsule around them then we have peritracheal or root hair plexus 
then we have merkel discs then let's go to encapsulated first we have meissner here meissner they are present in dermal papillae there is a corpuscle then pacinian we have a lamella then cross in bulbs of cross they are here then ruffini ruffini they are spindle shaped receptors now these receptors they can be cutaneous actually these cutaneous receptors correspond to anatomical classification of receptors then we have muscular receptors actually we study um, uh, receptors in skin muscle tendon and joints because uh, they can be tested easily then tendons joints now first let's learn about muscle in uh, muscle receptors they have neuromuscular spindles neuromuscular spindles so here as we can see this is a neuromuscular spindle and it has two fibers nuclear back fiber and nuclear chain fiber nuclear back fiber it has nuclei in a spindle shaped equatorial region whereas a nuclear chain fiber has a long chain of nuclei that is the only difference then these uh, motor innervation is by small gamma myelinated motor fibers as we can see this blue dotted lines then we have this is motor innervation sensory innervation is by type 1 and type 2 as i have told yesterday type 1 it will be annulo spiral type 2 is flower spray endings this annulo spiral fibers Uh, as so we can erase so this annulo spiral fibers they are present in the equatorial re region whereas this flower spray region are uh, somewhat away from this equatorial region then about stretch reflex stretch reflex it's a very simple phenomenon nothing but these sensory neurons these annulo spiral endings of flower spray uh, endings they are in synapse with alpha motor neurons so when they are stimulated these are also stimulated which will lead to rapid contraction of skeletal muscles which will lead to a reflex stretch that is stretch reflex then we have something called gamma reflex loop here nothing but when there is an active muscle contraction some of the descending fibers will also stimulate will also stimulate gamma motor neurons these gamma motor neurons will in turn stimulate our intrafusal muscle fibers as intrafusal muscle fibers as their collagen uh, as the sheath as the collagen sheath in which they are uh, present stretches it will stimulate our sensory neurons again these sensory neurons are in synapse with alpha motor neurons so again they are stimulated so see this active muscle contraction again when the alpha motor neurons they innervate skeletal muscle again there will be a contraction so contraction contraction this this is the thing happening this is a loop then we we have tendon receptors before that once again 
this is a golgi tendon organ we have tendon receptors here this is an in, this is inhibitory so when these sensory neurons of golgi tendon organ are stimulated they are in synapse with inhibitory interneurons they inhibit so when they are stimulated they are in synapse with alpha motor neurons so contraction is inhibited so here the main thing to note is that they are in synapse with inhibitory interneurons so as these interneurons are inhibitory they inhibit the alpha motor neurons so we can see uh, the picture uh, they are present in tendons here also there are interfusal tendon fibers and extrafusal tendon fibers then the last thing remaining is our joint receptors so it is not uh, like it's very simple they it can be a free nerve ending in articular discs or it can be a rufinis or it can be a neurotendinous spindle now after learning about um, receptors now let's learn about effectors effectors they are nothing but axon terminals just they are axon terminals of autonomic ganglia cells so they their axon terminals are called effectors so now learning about effectors there is an important term to note that is motor unit motor unit so it will contain an alpha motor neuron motor unit so it should contain a motor neuron so unit unit in the sense like it should be a wholesome stuff so, uh, if there is a neuron uh, the thing it innervates should also be there so it innervates muscle fibers so the muscle fiber and the alpha neuron innervated by it constitutes a motor unit now coming on to some clinical aspects nerve muscle innervation ratio nerve muscle innervation ratio so it is 1 is to 10 in extraocular muscles and intrinsic hand muscles then it is 1 into 1 is to 500 in trunk and lower limb muscles okay let it be but what is the application of it the application this symbolizes that one neuron supplies 10 muscle fibers here one neuron supplies 500 muscle fibers so here when one neuron supplies uh, just 10 muscle fibers the innervation will be uh, precise so precise movements is possible but here like as one neuron uh, innervates 500 precise movements will not be possible sensitive movements will not be possible so only gross movements is possible in trunk and lower limb but our extraocular muscles and intrinsic hand muscles they can perform precise movements so like uh, if a question is like uh, why a precise movement is possible in these muscles and why not in trunk and lower limb muscles this this nerve muscle innervation ratio should be told then something about organophosphorus poisoning so this phosphorus what it does is it inhibits cholinesterase cholinesterase that is it breaks down choline so when 
this is inhibited acetylcholine will not be broken down acetylcholine will not be broken down so there will be increased acetylcholine in synaptic clefts so there will be continuous contraction in the respiratory tract there will be contraction of skeletal muscles which line the respiratory tract and there will be spastic paralysis of the respiratory skeletal muscles which like it is it lines the respiratory tract so we will have it can lead to death so this is the reason for death in organ of phosphorus poisoning so that's all thank you have a nice day